Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 5. This one has some real surprises in it. This one just makes me shake my head. Uh, let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe because these are so much fun to do. Oh, I love this program. And I hate this program, but mostly I love this program. So here we go. First, we get to see the self-portraits the artist did in order to be accepted onto the program. That looks like an amazing drawing. Wow. We've only had one person with drawings who has won the entire program. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, something about that that's really intriguing to me and it has to do with color. Look at, look at the colors in that. You know, that's one of those paintings that you know there's this light source, a direct light source, but it seems to be glowing from the inside out. That's what excites me about that. All right, wow, wow, that's beautiful, wow. Looks exactly like him, that's for sure. And he's throwing in a couple of, why not throw in a couple of old masters behind you? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that's so easy to do. <laughs> this looks like a strong field. Oh, that's really fun, isn't it? Wow, she's wearing something feathered or or something like that. I love the attitude of that self-portrait. She looks like a lot of fun. It looks like it's done on a board, but I don't think it is. I think that's just a washed down acrylic background. Next one. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's a really interesting pose. Huh. That's really interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the design elements of that painting, so I'm looking forward to seeing what she does to the day. Oh, next one up. Oh, he's doing a, a joke on the girl with the pearl ear earring. That's really clever. Certainly looks like him, too. Boy. Now, this is looking like such a strong field, but I, don't, I actually don't think the program was as strong as this field, but maybe I'm not remembering correctly. Wow, that's really nice, too. Oh, I love... Oh, I, I love, absolutely love how relaxed the figure is. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. All right, let's see the next one. That's a little bit harder to see. Oh, now I remember her. Yeah, we're going to be talking about her. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay as positive as I can, but I do like her self-portrait. Here's the next one, next and last one of our participants. Aw. That seems to have like a mother and child kind of effect on me. It might not. Maybe it's just a blanket, but something really comforting and sweet about that image. All right, it looks like a really strong field. Maybe I'm not remembering this episode correctly, but I remember feeling pretty hot under the collar after recapping it. First model up is Alex French. And I got to turn my notebook over to remember who Alex... Oh, he's a pianist and a conductor. Huh, so... Oh, darn it. That was my first so. See, I'm try I know I'm going to end up saying so in my narratives. What I'm trying to do is get rid of it as this bridge that I do when I'm thinking because it's just a space filler and, and uh, I'm trying to correct that and, and my fans are, are helping me with that. I, I don't know if I'm succeeding or failing at that greatly. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first look and uh, Alex, Alexis, Alexis, sorry, is going to take one of these home. And that is an honor for any painter. So here's the first one up. Oh, that looks really good to me from here. That interesting pink square on the left is distracting, but if I put my finger in front of it, it's a kind of blah without it. So maybe she was going somewhere with that. I'm not sure. I kind of like the gesture of the figure. He looks relaxed. There's a real softness to her painting, isn't there? Real softness. Gosh, was this painted with kitten paws? <laughs> real, real soft touch. I mean, you know, we've talked about blending before, and I'm not a fan of over blending, but I, there's a lot of blending here, but at the same time, there's a lot of really pure hue. That blue purple comes through really pure. And she's managed her values correctly so that gold could be represented on the glasses. You have to have your values correct in order to make that that uh, shine happen. It has to be a real contrast to make that shine happen. Here's the next one up. This one is much, um, much more direct, a little bit less elusive than the last one was. Um, it looks like him. Um, it, it looks like it needs some more layers maybe, 
But I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think when we pull back, we'll have a better idea. I think it might be a fairly big piece. And when you do a big piece, you may not have time in four hours. Remember when you're mixing larger pools of paint, it takes longer to mix that. Oh, here we go. Yeah, she didn't get a chance to finish it. Oh, she's like three quarters of the way done. I would have, oh, wow. Just give her, what, 20 more minutes? So anyway, she'll be judged on what she did, not on what she didn't complete. And what she did do is beautifully done. So yay for her. All right, this is the one. This is the one, people. This is the one that I can't be positive about. I just can't be positive about this one. I do not know what you do with four hours when this is what you produce. I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And I don't understand how this could take the place of so many. We know thousands of people applied to this program and someone didn't get in because this artist did. I don't have a problem with somebody doing art that's outside the system or outside art or just kind of strange, but this, this is such a missed opportunity for me that I don't even begin to know how to talk about it. And so this may be a little hot under the collar. And here, to prove hashtag Joe was always wrong, it's coming, people. It's coming. <laughs> so let's see which one Alexis picks to take home. I could not be more surprised at the one he chose to take home. You know it's coming because I've led up to it. Here it is. Yes. Yes. So I would just say, I know I just use the word I don't want to use, using the word so as a bridge, but what I'm going to say is just keep painting because you don't know who's going to appreciate something you do, something you may not feel is a full success, but maybe they do. Dame Stella Reming Remington is the next one up. She is, oh gosh, she's the Director General of M15. So I would not mess around with her. If I was her child, I would not take cookies from the cookie jar because she's going to figure it out. So, so that is... That's an impressive resume. Now the artists are gonna turn their easels around and we get our first look. And I, I think this was the strongest grouping of the day. Let's take a, a closer look. The first one up is gonna be a fairly large piece, which surprises me. Now, there was a marionette there as well, adjacent to her. And when you're doing a commission, you wanna include important objects to your subject because they're the they're the paying customer and you want to please them. If you didn't know there was a marionette next to her, I think you'd be a little baffled as to what is that thing that's <laughs> there because it just doesn't read as what it is. It's just an odd element. But it makes for a nice painting overall. And in this case, with a final commission, you know, this would be in your home, and so you would understand that image right away. It certainly looks like her. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of painting, really fresh color work. She's nailed the likeness really nicely. She's made a relaxed form, so I'm, I, I, I really have to say I love that piece. Here's the next one up, a drawing. You can see the marionette a little bit better there in front. I like that it's de-emphasized in this case because I don't think it's the main event, but... Um, I, you know, that's where composition and decision decisions the artists make are so important because your customer is your customer, but they may be not correct about what works compositionally. That's why compromises are made along the way. Oh, look at that drawing. Oh my gosh. You know, I don't see how anybody could draw anything better than that, but I don't think that's what the judges are looking for. They really need to have a separate... Um, what do you call it, category for drawings. So here's the last image. and I really find this a lot of fun. I think it's kind of joyful, but you have to admit, I think you have to admit that the marionette kind of has equal importance to the figure. And if you don't know it's a marionette, it's weird. It's just a weird looking shape and form that seems to just like, what is it doing there? It, I, I have trouble when a painting doesn't make visual sense to me because my brain just won't let it go and it keeps trying to make it make sense. Like, make it make sense, make it make sense. If he'd had more time, maybe 
I, I suspect something was going to happen that was going to unify the marionette and the figure. Yeah, you can almost see that was going to happen, but he didn't have the time to do it. But I love the strength of color. I love the confidence. And of course, I like the brevity of strokes. That's He's speaking my language all the way here. Here we get another look up at it here. Now, will our sitter like it? Because it is certainly more stylized than, say, the drawing was of her, which was extremely precise, and the first one, which was sort of a split of the two, sort of um, not, not including every single detail, but clearly showing a recognizable person, as, as we know this woman to be. So l let's see which one Dame Stella Remington picks to go home. Well, again, baffled. I thought she would pick the first one, which was, or the drawing, but uh, nope, she picks this one. Now, this actually is, uh, my, is this my favorite? I'm not sure. Like I said, that marionette just hanging out there, it, competing with her is making my brain not relax. On to the next one. The next one is Big Zoo. Big Zoo is a, oh no, it's called Big Z-U. I write, I look these up phonetically so I can pronounce them correctly. And then when I go to narrate, I tend to forget to look at my, my uh, research. He is an English rapper. Doesn't he look cheerful? What a cheerful fellow. I would like to go out for coffee with him. <laughs> Pretty plain orange background behind him. Artists turn their easels around. We've had one kind of weak group, one kind of stronger group. And so this, if it follows the tradition of the program, will be probably a little bit varied. So let's take a look. First one up. Oh, I remember her self-portrait. I really liked her self-portrait. She had an unusual pose and I was interested in the design elements. And, and so here's the portrait that she did today. Um, hmm. Don't really have a lot to say about it. Yeah, when we get in closer, oh, it looks very much like him from there. Not so much when you pull away. Something gets lost in terms of impact, which I think has to do with how monochrome she's made the figure and the facial features. Hmm. I need to think about one, two, three, four, five. Okay. For a minute there, I thought there might be six fing fingers. It just looked like too much of a massive hand there. But who knows? Yeah, that looks... Uh, from here, that looks uh, that looks pretty great. I um, she's a strong contender. So let's see who the next one up is. The next one, something's gone a little awry here in the proportions. His face, something's gone on where he's um like been compressed from the top and the bottom. It, kind of a funhouse mirror effect of some kind. Something's a little off in proportions of the face, and then the neck and the shoulders. Maybe it was the position the person saw him in, which would have been relaxed, but the shoulders look really tense here. But that's that I'm, I'm getting too picky about that. I really love the color. Wow, it looks so different in this slide. Ooh, that's really tricky. However, I've got to say, there's some beautiful triad work going on in that shadow. And by triad, I mean when you use three primary colors, a red, a yellow, and a blue, in order to produce the um, idea of gray, but instead of mixing a gray, you mix those colors and then you put you apply them adjacent to each other and they will neutralize and turn into a gray that is, is more cohesive with the whole painting than it would be if you mixed up a separate gray. And he's done a really good job of that. Now this is the last one and this one, I, I something is missing for me. I, I, something's not, something, Gosh, what is it? This this one suffers from, if you watch my YouTube, you'd have to go back and look at way, way early YouTubes where I talk about no tan a lot. No tan has to do with the patterns of darks and lights in a painting so that you can establish an overall pattern that reads no matter what colors you use, but that the values read correctly. And something's gone awry in his face where the no tan has disappeared. So the eyes aren't connected to the nose, it isn't connected to the mouth, something, I, I don't know what it is. I suspect it has something to do with the overhead lighting because when you have overhead, well, it's overhead lighting, so it's really good lighting, but there's not one single light source. So something went awry there and his self-portrait was absolutely perfection. So something happened to him uh, in this process and it's a grueling process, but this is the one big, ZU picks. 
So once again, what do I know? I've, I, have I gotten all the picks wrong? Yeah, I think I have. <laughs> Let's see if we get to the end. And hashtag Joe is always wrong for the incomplete program. That would be the first. I have to admit, that would be a first. Now the judging begins. Now the judging has all nine artists lined up, but only three will be chosen to go on to the semifinals of this episode. From the semifinals, they'll pick three, and then only three of those, and from those three, they'll pick one who go on to the semifinals of the season. So there, there are our contestants. They've had an incredibly long day. They haven't stayed in their homes. They're, they've had to travel to London. They've had two hours to paint, an hour for lunch, and then two hours more to paint. They've had hot lights on them. They've had cameras surrounding them and a lot of noise from the crowd. Who knows how long it, it takes for the judges to do the judging. So by this time, they have to be absolutely exhausted. So here's the first one chosen. And I agree, that was one of the ones that I really liked and thought represented Big Z you <laughs> very well. Let's see the next one. The next one, yeah, I can't even explain why this one means so much to me. I think this was the person, well, we'll find out in a second. Well, we have to look at the self-portraits next to the these. And let's Then we can look at the coloration of what they did with their self-portrait. Oh, now I see what that pinkish thing was. It's, it's, it's music on a music stand. Well, of course, that makes sense. He's a composer. Okay, that's a result. Excuse me, that's resolved for me. And here's the last one. Yeah, I really, really love that one. Wow. Boy, I was so smart to put that red patch on the right-hand corner. Put your hand up and get rid of that red patch. And so much energy is gone from the painting when you do that. It's amazing. That's a design element. That's, that's smart. That's just smart painting. Final judging begins. This is when we get to see the portraits that they did in order to get on the program next to what they did in the four hours today. So we're looking for consistency of style and of how they manage the day. I love this particular shot. It usually comes on on the program and lasts about the blink of an eye, but it's the one chance you get to see all three semi-finalists of this episode together in a row. And I really enjoy that. And if you want to you know, you can press your screen and pause it here and, and have a nice look. It's also taken from a pretty considerable distance away, so it gives you an idea of what someone's painting might look like on a gallery wall as opposed to in your home. Remember, even when we walk into our homes and we think, oh, I have a big living room. No, we do not. Not compared to a gallery space. We live in postage stamps compared to a gallery. That's expansive. Oh, here's the first one up. Well, I'm a fan. You know, she's really got a lot of work with really soft colors. She's got lost and found edges. She's, I enjoy her compositions. She's considering the negative space and the spaces around it. She's created a lot of space as well and a lot of color contrast. You know, you got the black in her hat all the way to the white on the back of her hand and the same thing. Okay, on to the next, sorry. Wow. Well, this might be my favorite one of the day because I think this was incredibly challenging to get, uh, you know, a woman dressed in dark clothing in a dark chair with a strange marionette figure. Figure. If I had drawn the card and this was the one that I had to paint, oh, I would have been, I would have been struggling because those are a lot of elements to pull together. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. She was the one with that kind of strange pose. I think she did a great job today. Every one of these painters is really consistent and probably could win the program. So I don't know what the judges are going to do. And that's okay with me. You know, anybody who, who wins this episode, that's, that's fine with me. I guess what I was baffled at is, is what the individual models chose to take home and perhaps why some people were chosen to be on the program. But that's, that's why we love and hate the program. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't edit this tremendously well. Um, and please let me know how many times I said so. It's going to be 50 or something. Darn. There it is, the final portrait. I really want to see more from this person, so I'm excited that she won. But indeed, this episode did have some highs and some lows. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. 
join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.